Hey, welcome back, everyone. We are here with another episode of your favorite 13th age stream focus in the fantasy setting. Saved myself. Um, boy, oh boy, are we finally going to have the main party back together. Um, last time you guys played, um, Lucian had a little oopsie whoopsie. Uh, and you guys went to go read some books about it and found some neat information and probably some lore in there, too. But we don't play this game for the lore. So, yeah, that's where we're at. If everyone could just simultaneously tell me who you are and who you're playing, that'd be great. Okay. My name is Ellen. I play Three, two, one, go. My name is Ellen. I'm Seb. I'm playing Ash, the sorcerer, and... Operatic Bard and head of Jay's Project. Yeah. Well, okay, well, nice. Good Every, job, I'm guys. glad to see that everybody else just jumped into the pool with us on that yeah, one. Wow, okay. They don't even they don't even get to introduce themselves. Yeah, no, you guys just have to wonder. Hey, last it, week was such a harrowing experience. Ellen, I never Ellen, want to relive it ever again. Ellen, do you do you just want to introduce everybody else with me, and they don't get to introduce themselves? Oh, there we go. Okay, who do you want to introduce? Relationships. Okay, so uh, a right. Everyone today playing Kalia is going to be Kaylee. Uh, Ka Kalia is the shield master with um, with commitment issues. And Pow will be playing Leanne Morins, the government worker. Uh, beyond that, we're going to have Max playing Lucian, the ranger slash barbarian werewolf himbo. <laughs> so we're going to completely gloss over Kalia's cleric levels yes commitment okay. issues yeah yeah commitment issues yeah. the commitment issues are about four levels of cleric do you think do you think you get to stay in the church if you divorce from god no yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit i rolled you get right half here. of the church if you divorce god <laughs> you oh, get yeah. half. <laughs> there we go <laughs> and that's <laughs> and that's how we ended up with orthodox christianity <laughs> but basically <laughs> Not even kidding. And of course, I play the entire mimic world that the party explores. Well, they haven't figured this out. I, you would think that since every character has the same voice, they would start to wonder, but nope. Um... <laughs> Look, I thought we were in a frog. No, it's it's the fog of war, not the frog. Oh, go. Oh, man. Get ready for some... Oh, we back. I have relationships. We <laughs> back. Oh, oh my god. I still Someone haven't had any for torch. like a month now. I rolled two fives. I think that's the most <laughs> I've rolled for icon relationships in a year. So, GM, tell me, what's this effect tab in the character sheet? Oh, boy, baby. We have updated to the latest version of the system. We've got some cool thing, new features, like the fact that your characters now have an effects tab. Any active effects you have active will show up in the effects tab. Man, we're good at naming things. That made sense. Um, for instance, Kalia has a Halo... Um, macro that applies a ac bonus when it's active along with some other defenses and they'll show up there and you'll see those bonuses you um, literally could have just said a flat defense bonus and you made it the worst sounded way possible kalia gets a ac bonus and also a pd bonus and also an md bonus all the same value mm -hmm. and they'll show up there now we don't have the data entered for a lot of things yet, but expect that tab to make to mean more to you in the future. Um, we've also what else did we do? You've seen you've already we've already been playing on the beta with the multi attacks, and there's a there's a secret new feature that I'm not going to tell you yet because it's for later in the session and I get to test it for the first time. So it's going to break. That it's always goes well. Don't a break. <laughs> that has never in the history of reveals ever worked. And yet here we are. So. Oh yeah, Seb's here. 
I don't have to uh, say he stays behind to read books. You guys yeah. explored the Quillgate Library, a very cool place with a lot of information. The problem is, of course, getting that information. Um, do you want to go ahead, everyone, tell me one piece of, like, thing, one, th one thing you learned from last session. Seb, set, start us off. I learned that Can the White might have uh, a, a, a way to fix my skin condition, and also these weird magic powers what shoot from my fingertips every few days. Just every few days? Every five minutes. I didn't want to make a thing out of it, but thanks. All right. <laughs> I don't know why, but that one got me. Um, Rumham? Oh, me? I didn't know we were going in that order. Um, Talia learned some information about uh, the god, the mysterious god of fertility that uh, gave her her cleric powers back. What that information was, I don't remember because it was very general information. Nothing specific or like interesting was told. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. He kind of makes things fertile. Yeah, that's about it. All right. Alan? Uh, we learned that the... Oh, God, the Great Ghoul. Sorry, I lost the name there for a second. Uh, the Great Ghoul in the past has tried to use um, the bodies of very powerful things like uh, the Koro Behemoths um, in order to help increase his power. And so it's very likely that he is targeting the stone thief um, which le but which you know introduces the potential that we don't actually want to kill the uh, stone thief we want to deal with the great ghoul first okay I, I, I actually I just want to take a note that that sharp turn towards accelerating the main plot I I'm actually very excited towards We've been on the same pace we always have. Dribbles. That's the last you'll hear about that plot for another ten sessions. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what pow? Uh, we learned that the Wizard King, good old Lich King boy, uh, for some reason, instead of doing anything that makes sense, made a bunch of books you can just eat to sustain his army because is this his library no oh, okay but under the wizard king one of the things created was an edible book where you could write recipes and the insatiable book yes hey, it's important research item. man you, you give them an item that could like summon food no you, you literally make them eat paper. That sounds on brand. I don't know what you're complaining Well, about. I mean, if they made multiple books, it says that if you destroy the book, or if you eat the last page, you actually get a meal out of it. Again, this just seems like a lot more effort than it's worth. Yeah, well, you know. That feels on brand. You can have whatever meal you want. Just have to eat all this paper first, you loser. I mean, this is really why he had to become a lich. He just ran out of time to do the things that really mattered to him because of passion projects like this. <laughs> right. Skeletons don't complain about eating 250 sheets of paper back to back. Why are they? Why are, are they even Maybe. writing things in the paper? Are they just eating the paper. <clears throat> I. I like to think that the Lich King just like makes skeletons eat the eat the sheets of paper so that he can have a bunch of books that only have one sheet left. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, um, someone needs to roll for how many pages were actually in that thing. Isn't that already rolled did in it? the freaking item itself? <laughs> did it auto roll? If it did, then I did my job better than I should have. Than I meant to. Than <laughs> I thought I did. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, looky there. <laughs> anyway, um, Max. 
Uh, I don't think Balrin actually learned a thing. Um, he was just trying to shove down everyone else's throats that magic originated because of dragons. He learned that librarians are easy to intimidate. Yeah. Guess so. I think it's a lesson you gain when you gain your library card. <laughs> All right. Um, and amongst us, you guys also found some information the provost had wanted about, you know, what um, studies on the stone thief and the, the custodians within. And you found some uh, info that might lead you to being able to help Lucian. Among other things, you found out that Dungeonborn, you know, will quickly, like, atrophy to a certain point and then stem off and then just kind of sit at that point for the rest of their lives. They're able to leave dungeons for a while, but are inevitably have to return. And you can sever that connection via a striking at the heart of the stone thief, the actual literal heart. Um, additionally, Ash found that it is possible to do certain medical things um, by putting people in and out of stasis, but that's just kind of like a loose thread, a, another option you might have down the way. Well, Something you'd have luckily to enough. In. Yeah, I mean, luckily enough, I, uh, I get, it's not just lightning, right, that comes out of these fingertips. I also make a lot of ice, like a lot. <laughs> More importantly to Ash is probably the fact that he has acquired a map um, showing the location of Arcanite, of the Arcanite research stations throughout space and time. I'm hoping to, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a tattoo removal, but all over. Literally every, every inch and part of my soul, too, if they can get that deep. Worth a shot. All right, so we'll open up the scene. You guys have returned to the tent where Lucian is. He has a few attendants. He's looking a bit better than he did before. Um, but more importantly, Rumham, uh, Kalia has gleaned something from the knowledge that will help stop him from getting worked now. What did you learn? Um, Kalia learned that... Uh, there are certain, uh, like, minerals and, like, metals in the rocks that have, uh, like, a kind of magical magnetic force. That so sounds like you... something the dame could help you with. Yeah. Dame, uh... you, and Cal you and Kalia have arrived and bounce ideas off of each other, and you think that while performing a suitable song or opera, while Kalia puts in magic healing, you can stop the process. Tell us about it. Um, it's really, it's it's a kind of a good luck charm song that, it's an old dwarven mining song, and the idea is that you're basically supposed to be imbuing good luck into, you know, the vein is going to stay stay strong, and it's going to be easy to access, and all of that. And uh, that you're, or even if you're opening a new mine, that you're actually going to find the stuff that you're looking for. Um, and it's, it's really more of a folk song, but the dames picked up a few tricks to kind of add in magic to it to help, uh, help Kalia out. Okay, okay. Now, musical um, energy is good, but you also need a bit more additional oomph of magic. Ash, how are you empowering this uh, entire affair? Um. Wait, sorry, I must have missed a crucial detail here. What are what what were we working towards? Is this is this doing the stasis for Lucian? You are going to essentially stop Lucian's at, uh, turning into bits of building and stone in its place. I. Oh boy, let's see. How weird can I get with my magic? Um. Do I have the ritual book with me? Can I? I, I mean, I have, have it with me. With you. Okay. Uh, this is gonna get downright nefarious. I think I am going to um, use breath of 
the white. If I have time enough to switch out a spell, do we have a full rest? No. No, but we that's don't. okay. I'm allowing it for the purposes of this interaction. Yeah, I'm going to use Breath of the White to basically give him frostbite around the building so the skin dies before he could turn to building. Okay, and of course this whole operation needs to be, this whole coordination of all this magic that normally doesn't merge together. You've got, you know, divine magic, you've got arcane magic, uh, both musical and, and and raw energy tapped from the icons. Needs careful direction and execution. Leanne? How you t how how are you taking the lead in this situation? I need to take lead in order to ensure that everything here is executed properly. Mm -hmm. Well, in times of surgical precision, that's when you take a more quiet tone with a firm voice. And generally speaking, th th this is magic. She she doesn't know that much about magic. Look, I don't know what you want from her past just being like, just keep your hands steady. Like, <laughs> make it till you make it, Leanne. It's a force of will kind of thing, you know? You really calm the nerves of everyone around you. Well, you know, shutting up and getting you. out of the way is a very useful thing. That That is a fair point. The milky white, more of a marble, like Lucian's veins were turning literally to raw marble, kind of recedes a bit. His skin takes on a more natural color, and he's left with largely just like a single, like two, his two smallest left fingers turn to oh, like a statue, that of a statue's, although he's bending them as he's staring at them as if they were natural. And a bit of his hand, it, his palm has embedded like tile from a road. And these are the remaining marks of his encounter. Um, he looks a lot better now, thanks to your guys' efforts, which took probably upwards of like half an hour to do. Um, all the, in this time, the provost has come over personally to watch this finish off and to await your guys' report of what you found in the handover of knowledge. Thank you for waiting. I can't. So can I? Go ahead. Can Lucian move his fingers? His two fingers yep. that are. Huh. They like feel cold, but like you can otherwise use them as normal. They're maybe a little clumsier than normal, like a little slower. The provost gives like a, a, a soft, gruff grunt, and he's like, "I can't believe you stopped the process." I, I, it appears no longer necessary to bash in your friend's skull. He looks down at his pole as if he's slightly what? disappointed. What? <laughs> it's not necessary. That to was do that. plan B. That was plan A. It's not necessary. I think we to were closer to plan C. We have the information to prove that they aren't necessarily allies of the dungeon. Hmm. Well, I feel normal. Mostly. They cannot leave the dungeon. What? But, Mr. Provost, as you put it, neither can you. Well, we might be yes. able to release the bond that he has with the stone thief. There's just an intense, long, cold stare from the provost at you, weighing your every word on scales in his mind. Dame is used to standing in front of entire audiences. One guy staring at her isn't going to do anything. Uh, what of the information that you were sent to acquire? I assume you were successful and that you have returned? We have. And uh, Dame's going to hand over... He takes a quick look at like their covers, nods, and he's like, "You've done good work for the for the town of Dungeon." Happy to help. As agreed, you may stay under our roofs for as long as you so wish. Although, why one such as yourself would choose to stay in this place, I 
I will leave you to find that reason. Wait, so if I leave the dungeon, I lose my fingers? You will be drawn to return to the dungeon if you stay out of it for too long. How does that work, exactly? Like, you know when you're really hungry and you just gotta go get a snack? End up in front of the fridge. So I'll just be miserable? Yeah. It'll, it'll be just like a slight itch at first, and then over time it'll be like, you'll find yourself pacing outside the fridge, and then finally you're just rummaging through like, a, I need something, come on, I need something. And then I'll what instinctively know where it's going to come up yeah as of now you now have a vague sense of where the thief is at all times not you don't recognize this yet this is something you'll learn later um because you're inside it right it's all around you mm -hmm. um but actually that's a sense that you were familiar with in the past when you carried the eye of the stone thief for a while So I will probably go insane if I leave. For too long, yeah. And then being a werewolf will not help that. Nope. That's a good thing your character has a lot of practice of self-control. Much like a hobbit, you will survive the influence for much longer. It's because of the hair. It's because of the hair. Alright, looks uh, like we gotta kill your this thing. Yeah, no hair. Uh, I will give all of my gold to... Dame. <laughs> Which I have a ton of. <laughs> I'll make sure to use it to support the other werewolves. Just make sure you put my hair money to good use. Of course. I'm just... It is... Like buying you a hat. That is like 900 gold. 899, to be exact. I I'm going to take a quick GM aside here. and it Understanding it's ambiguous that if you leave for too long, you'll be drawn. And from a story standpoint, if you guys leave the Stone Thief and decide to just avoid it for whatever reason, not that I think you would, then I would just I use that as a GM tool to force you back into interaction with the Stone Thief. Like... That's you're otherwise free to like leave the stone thief for a while, do some overland quests, attend to your manor, all the things you have been doing. It's just an, it's just a way for me to keep the stone thief tied to your story. Okay, so he can still he should still keep his money probably. He should probably still keep his money, yes. No, he should definitely give his money to me. I'll take good care of it. Uh-huh. You still need to pay Leanne back. It's fifteen gold. I'll get to it, Leanne. How have you not paid it back yet? I don't know. Before the provost leaves, he, he turns around one last time. If you're looking for more work with more rewards, see to my provisioner and he will let you know what we could use help with. We always need it. And then with the swoosh of his cape, he leaves military style steps clocking down the tile as he goes into the darkness of Dungeon Town. Well, there's not much harm in asking, at least. We still need to find our way out of this place. We pretty much can't go anywhere until the stone thief surfaces again. That is the truth. You can't so go might... anywhere within the um, wild caves. Do we have any insight into when the stone thief will surface again, or...? Nope. So okay. we might as well go talk to the provisioner. Uh, is the, uh, the, the town, the townspeople and stuff, was anything ruined in the big boss fight? Like, do they need help? Fixing things up, or... of course. They, well, you know, the gates could use some reinforcements. The one, the main party, uh, like that we played, is un undamaged, but um, 
you know, the other gates could use some mild repairs. There's, of course, the dead to tend to um, equipment to service. People who are hungry or in, you know, in need of food or people who have wounds in need of, um, you know, care, you know, tending. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, we can go talk to the provisioner. Um, yeah. I'm also kind of curious. Can we, is there any way we can get like that? There was the map of the caves. Yep. I can get that up. That'd be awesome. As a reminder, last time you were in Dungeon Town, you explored um, the market. Uh, you saw the shelters, but did not visit them. Uh, you battled at the gates. You went. You went to Lobster Pot Inn. There is still a uh, living dire snail that has a wizard's tower attached to it. That appears to be someone's house or maybe shop. It's, un it's hard to tell. Um, or you can go visit the shelters or wander around areas you've already been. Okay with wandering around Dungeon Town a bit more, um, seeing if we can help after the attack. What the rest do you think? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I am really intrigued by this like wizard's tower snail thing. Yeah, we'll follow. As before, um, the town is in, is very dark. Um, outside of the main street, which is only dimly lit, the other, the rest of the streets are just almost pitch black, with people follow, finding their way around um, just by raw. They they remember the route. Every now and then, you'll get bits of string that like help you guide help guide um, the elderly or the new across various sections. Um, people are you know living here and just bare lean-tos like he here's a here's someone sitting under half of a door that they've cr cropped up on a uh, like armor breastplate or two uh there's someone who's formed a little um lean-to with a couple of other people and it's a family of three or at least a unit of three who have stacked up boxes and some crab like j dire crab shells in order to form a little building these people are not living their best lives but they are living their lives and that's maybe the best they can do right now well the you said there was like a wizard tower on a tour on a on a dire shell correct um one second Stone thief. um towards the end of the market street and on like it's really hard to see where one, where one section of the town starts and the other ends. It's just an organic blur um, of things that have been built together. There is, like, on the intersection of that street in the living quarters, just a, a living dire snail slowly chewing on something out of a big bucket. The, its shell has been, like, twisted and shaped into a small, moist wizard tower. And there's a little door on the, uh, on it and a little sign with a wizard hat out, hanging out of it. What do we think the odds all are that a chromatic wizard? Probably pretty freaking high. Yep. Should we go check in, see if they know when the stone thief's gonna surface? There's no harm. Well, there could be harm. As long as somebody else talks to so it. Alright, let's go. Uh, Dame's gonna go up and knock on the door. The door is up a solid, like, eight feet on the back of the snail. is gonna knock on um, However, a little, <laughs> sta a little staircase has been, like, Detached to the side of the uh, snail's shell, so you can climb up there. Okay, I'll go ahead and climb up. As you climb up, the one, one of the two eyes on big stalks from the snail like twist around to look at you, unblinking, and then returns back to what it was munching on. Uh, you give a firm knock, 
on the very small porch and hear a, bu a, a bunch of clattering of, oh, Jim Jam, flam it. Um, and then just things are being knocked over. Someone's getting up in a hurry. One minute, one minute, oh, no rush. Um, magic just kind of whizzes out the window window with a phew and uh, casting a bit of light. Um, a small flying creature just kind of escapes out the window shortly thereafter. Uh, and, and then the door opens up and there is a disheveled wizard and a, uh, like, I guess brown robe and hat. Although you're not sure how much of that is dirt or not. Not. What can Wait, I do for you? Uh, we want, we are one. We saw your your snail. Oh yeah, uh, love it. Love this creature. Wasn't yeah. expecting the charm smell spell to last this long, but you know, you never can account for die snails. Yeah, no, it's a uh, fascinating work. Um, the wizard takes a and spits into his hand and offers it out. Name's Mirrodin. Dame Kiri Jade's fine. She's going to bow instead of taking his hand. Allie will shake his hand. You don't know where you're fitting on this porch with the dame. It's just barely oh, holding. Right. Yeah. She's tall yeah, enough. She kind of yeah. her hand over the edge. I just, yeah, I just reach over the dame and shake his hand. He reaches down. What can I do for you, fine folk? You need some magics. You need some lights. If you, you know, a lot of people around here want the magic lights. It's a popular item. We met, we were wondering, actually, your house reminded us a little bit. We've met some wizards outside of the Stone Thief. Um, and we were wondering if uh, if you had some, if you were also potentially a, a chromatic wizard. Ha! ha! I wish. I'm, I've studied for many, many years. I could never even be half the wizard those people are. You know what? You know, Honestly, I've met some dwarves out of the Stone Thief, too. Do you know anything about them? The what? Some dwarves. Dwarves. Yeah, you're a dwarf. I am a dwarf. Yes. You, you um, know, you know, you know the dwarf king. He, he like rolls I, his I, eyes like. I I do actually. I've worked with him personally. Oh. Oh <laughs> come. He like wipes the brow of, uh, you know, wrings out his hat a bit and puts it back on his head. His unkempt hair being hidden again. Well, uh, come come on into my humble abode. Look, I'll be honest, I kind of just want to know if you're aware of when the stone thief will surface again. Well, uh, I can do a little incantation, try to divine some information, but I mean, most of the time, folks around here just want some, you know, lights or some healing potions, you know, the occasional sage counsel from a wizard, uh... Does it look like we're from around here? The Stone Thief brings all types, friend. Well, we're trying to leave. <laughs> Just like everyone else. Except the Provost. I think he wants to stay here. You ask me. Don't tell him I said that. I, I thought don't the think same thing. Disagree. Uh, well, you know, we'd, we'd love to, to come in and, and, and chat a little bit, see, maybe see if we can work out that. Oh, yeah, come on in. Don't mind. Don't mind the mess. Don't mind the clatter. It's just my humble bow. Okay. Uh, Dame's going to go ahead and go in. Is anyone else coming? So the porch is small, but can more than one person fit in the house on top of the snail? Um, remember your college apartment? Uh, oh no! Gosh. This is this is about the size of a dorm. Oh. Yeah, Kalia can't fit in there. Sorry, uh, you know, I'm I'm height challenged, size challenged. Yeah, and I, you you could fit in there. Yeah, the hands going in. You guys cram in, uh, except in Calia, and it smells a lot like a college apartment, too, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Some interesting Calia plants. Calia is just poking her head through the door. She's, she's just, like, resting her chin on the porch and, like, looking through the door. Um, 
Mirrodin, Mirrodin is like hastily clearing off some surfaces, try, you know, stacking up some books for you, people to sit on and such. What can I do for it? Like, oh, you want, you want, I remember, you want the incarnation. I got, the, he's like pulling out a bowl and putting in some various bones and like an eyeball and some liquid. And he's like, I'm going to need one of your hair. Not you, he points at Lucian. You ain't got any left. Sure. Dame will give him a hair. He pockets it and then can proceed to continue to fill the uh, bowl. I'm assuming that was payment then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Payment. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's only you eat hair. It's better than what's at the lobster pot. You're. Bad decision. <laughs> not entirely wrong. <laughs> Uh, he, he, like, shakes out the bowl on the ground and starts muttering and, like, consulting some books. I think this is a short trip. It should only be a couple days. All right. How long has it been? How long have I been out? Uh, it's been about overnight for Lucian. I remember one time, one time the Stone Thief was down for three months. Well, he nearly ran out of fungus. No, that must have been tragic. You said there were other dwarves down here. Were any of them jade spines? Wouldn't know, hon. Didn't ask them. They didn't say. Where were they? Uh, he just kind of gestures vaguely with one hand. Oh, lots of folk wander in. They wander out, saying they're gonna escape. Mo most never come back. Hopefully, all most of them escape. Let's be real. Probably not, hun. Yeah, probably not. That's a shame. Well, if you've run into any but any other dwarves uh, from the Jade Spine Clan, I well, I I don't really know what I would ask you to say. <laughs> That's just my clan. You see, we're trying to. Uh, rescue them if we can. Family is important. I grew up with a family of 13. I was the 13th uh, born. All of them were older than me. They said I'd never make anything for myself. But, I, you know, the seventh taught me how to read early. And I started to pick up them books like it was candy. That's how I went on the track to be a wizard. Wonderful story. How heartwarming. Of course, the ace tried to sell me into slavery, but, you know, middle children, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Is that normal? Can't really say. I'm an only child. I wouldn't know. Well... So while you're here, like, what what news you bring? What your outsiders? You, you, you would stop for gossip around here. God, there's only so many times you can talk about the provost's ass hair or not. Uh, there's a giant war going on, as usual. <laughs> as usual. Who's There's fighting dwarves this time? It's the dwarves and the elves. So nothing's changed on the surface, I see. That's... Well, they are ever done. Fight! They stopped for a bit there. But, uh, yeah, they're back at it. Um. Yeah. A uh, uh, hellhole is closed. Uh, the, the one up, uh, up north by Nomad. He just shakes his head like, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, it, it's closed now. It does. It uh, doesn't go to hell anymore. Oh, that's that's a good right there thing. <laughs> that uh, that happened after your time, didn't it? Uh, you know, hell holes they pop up, they pop down. Sometimes the Crusader takes some, sometimes the Empire takes some. There was that one time the Orc Lord took one, then no way like that. Huh. I think I remember the report about that one. It was not fun. Uh, legislacerators are probably new. 
Um, uh, what now? Kazuntai. Yeah, that's probably more you. Yes. Due to the ever-expanding nature of the Empire, there was a experimental position that was created. I'm the first of it. We are more or less roaming officers of the law that enforce the law where the Empire and the guards cannot reach. That's smart. I like that. God bless the Emperor. That's the, that's the short version, anyway. How, how long have you been down here? Oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 100, 200 years, give or take. So there's probably a new emperor. Nah, those guys live forever. Mm. I mean, they say we still got wandering, around, got one here wandering around in the uh, you know Hall of Ages. Yeah, well, the difference is, the undead are a lot more common down here, I find, than in the Empire. That's true. I don't know. The world above isn't that much different. It's plagued with spider teleporting spiders and. Then mm -hmm, people come mm -hmm. back to life. It, it wars. It's it's, it's really, you There's know, you, you, you don't have it too bad. There's the great ghoul. Um, that's a thing. Uh, an old icon, uh, uh, sort of a death icon worshipping thing situation. Uh, the Lich King. No, no, different one. Um, two of them now. That sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah it's really a problem. He'll steal bodies. So. Just... The Lich King? <laughs> no. The no. Great Ghoul. They both steal bodies. The difference is one of them eats the bodies. Yeah. Either way, it's probably a good idea to be uh, cremating your dead, especially if you have uh, any jackals in the area. I, I mean, you know, he might even come for the ones that walk around. Do do we know if he comes after the living und after the living dead, the the un the undead that are mobile, the dead that are mo that are moving? I mean, I imagine they would fight the jackals more. Hmm. Uh, he looks in close. He's gonna be like, not gonna lie. Kind of sounds like a lazy excuse. Kind of a rip off derivative icon, if you're gonna ask me. That's what I, I said. <laughs> Get some new bodies. All the god, all these death gods, dealing bodies, doing nefarious things. To, uh, it's all the same. Anyway, different brand, same damn industry. Well, one is in the like resurrecting the dead. The other eats them to become stronger themselves. But. Right. So does the, the same industry? Does is the great ghoul just alone? Then has he eaten all the dead things around him? Does he, does he create undead? He has the jackals. They worship him. Yeah, but does he care? I mean, I assume they're selling him their power. We know the ghoul cuts deals and delivers his power to others in return for yeah sucking their body dry that's disgusting like that's really what he does no you're right i look i i i she sort of just like looks at kalia <laughs> silently hey Well, I think I uh, better uh, get uh, get going here. Yeah. Lucian will just kind of excuse himself. Or he walks past Kalia and be like, I'd rather be asleep still. Mage Flame yeah. bless you. We better wow. go with him. He, uh, he just got out of the hospital. You see, we would want him to take a tumble in the street or something. See, those rocks are going to take over his mind. You see those, right? They're sticking out of him very, sort of just very openly. It's only on his hand. Just yeah. Two fingers. 
Hey, Ash, we don't make fun of your weird scaly skin. Don't make fun no, of it's, Lucian's weird scaly it's, skin. No, it's nice to have somebody here. Do you want some... Do you want... I have extra robes if you want to hide your shame. <laughs> oh, I never died! Lucian. Lucian's shame. Oh, yeah. He, he should take one. No, Kalia too. What? Lucian laughed. <laughs> We're trying well, to leave. Tell you what, I like the le rest of you. So if you got anything in need, I'll, I'll give you to you know at a discount. We got healing potions. We got you know sage advice. You can always use some sage advice from a bio wizard. Uh, I can. I'll take some sage advice from a bio wizard. Yeah, I will too. Sure. <clears throat> uh, sage like advice number one. If you're gonna charm a dire snail, make sure that you pick one you like, because it lasts too long. <laughs> That's good uh, advice. Sage advice number two, when you're shaping said dire snail's shell, make sure you practice on some of those other weird shells out there that you learn the runes from before on, you do on your tower, or else you get weird sleeping quarters like this, and he slaps a, you know, a, a really... Like, it, it, it looks like it should be a bed, but it just kind of has a lump in the middle, right where the back would be. That doesn't look comfortable. You can see he's a bit, like, bowed in his back from sleeping there. That does look uncomfortable. Have you tried a different dire snail? Yeah, I'm not going back to where I found this one. Okay. That's generally good practice, right? Because if they don't take care of this dire snail... Yeah, you know, how can you trust That's that they true. take out take care of other dinosaurs? I don't I don't know where I don't know who learned, you know, how to shape those big shells out there. That's some mighty impressive magic, but you know. You have you thought about that magic? Have you, you thought about transplanting a slug into one of those shells? Uh, those shells are big big enough to build cities out of, as you can see, and he gestures up towards the ceiling. Uh, I right. don't think it's there's a slug big I hope there is not a slug big enough. <laughs> That's, let's all hope for that. What about the crab? I, no, even worse. I'd rather have a giant snail. Uh, sage advice, what number was I on? Uh, sage advice number three. Always give your advice in threes. All right. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> all right, yeah. yeah that's that's some, some sage advice. Okay. Let's go catch up with Lucian before he gets into more trouble. Bye bye now. It's nice meeting you. Um, Ash, as you turn to leave, like you knock over a few things by accident. As you're like, you know, as as Mirrodin's like trying to clean up, you see a single scroll of teleportation. Um, as he frantically is trying to make sure you don't see. <laughs> hey. Hey y'all! Uh, I mean, yeah, you're leaving, that's... right? Yeah. Uh, what are you leaving? No, no. It's my it's my home and shop. My buy. I think. No. Then why would you? Uh, <laughs> why would well, you? That was a good would... visit, friend. Ah. Uh, what do you? What do you no need? No more sage advice. Cl shop closed. Business what do you need hours that are. Open. <clears throat> you weren't supposed. What do you? What do you? To... You weren't supposed to see that. Why? Why wasn't I supposed to see that? Because it's mine. People yeah, walk. okay. You can't tell people I have it. They'll want it to get out of here. I want it. Just like that. Just just like he starts swearing like as he like, stomps <laughs> off. Come on. <laughs> I start rifling through my coin purse. Come on, on the counter. No, 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 no. No. I I need this to get out to myself when my job is done. When your when your job is done. You can see him visibly biting his own tongue. <laughs> I am going to sort of put my coin purse away and uh and and huh. I'm going to try and and intimidate him by like uh Letting lightning flash across my eyes. Go ahead and roll charisma. 
Uh, overcharged. And that's a one, baby. You like channel a little bit of energy as lightning crosses your eyes, and then they just wink out as he seemingly grows double in size, stilling oh. the magic around him. Oh, he can just do that. What are you going to do then with Show what, you uh, yeah. the door? Uh, <sighs> this guy has a job to do. I, I tell the party as I sort of like back up into them. What job? I don't know. He won't tell me. And he's now grown twice his size. You as pissed, you can see. You were in there for 30 seconds and you pissed him off? Well, I, you know, I, he was small before, then he got big. It wasn't, it wasn't like he was big when I asked him. Uh-huh. You, you try to tell them what you saw, but when you're like, he had a scroll of the, a, a scroll, <laughs> the, it, it, it just, the word gets stuck on your tongue. Oh come on! Uh, can the dame, uh, the dame was gonna duck her head back in it and just be like, oh, uh, we heard that you might have a job you need. If you need any help with that, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, I'm always. He's like he's just sitting there, like smoking a pipe, his normal size now, all magic gone. If you ever are interested in, like, if you find some interesting scrolls or books, fine, send it my way. I like a scroll of teleportation, right? Yeah, a scroll of... <laughs> <laughs> a, a scroll of... Movement? Moving <laughs> instant... <laughs> no, God. Can't do it. I want a counterspell. I want a counter magic. I want a counterspell. Sure. Roll. Your target oh, is yes. 25. Oh! Okay. Uh, you know, I... I have... Click. Oh, I have to target for that? You don't have to target. Oh, I definitely did not cast that. It's not working. I'm oh. sorry. I don't know. Uh, your ash. Yes. The counter spell is counter magic. Sorry, you ha yeah. currently have one use left of it, or did it already detract? Um, I still have one use. Yeah. Okay. It apparently so it's not. Yeah. Is broken. Yeah. I'm just gonna re-import it. Is that another wizard? I think. Yeah, that's a wizard feature. I think. But I got it from the Arcanite racial feature, so that's right. why. Yeah, that's just not working. All right, I'll note that down for later. All right, the role of it, however, is D20 plus your intelligence modifier plus your love. Okay. And any arcane no. bonuses you have. Any arcane bonuses that I have. I don't think I have anything... You have a Deathmark wand, which gives you a plus two RK bonus. Oh. Um, so I know, we two. haven't had a roll for an attack in like two years. You, uh... As you <laughs> no, 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 wait a second. That this is, is a second Hold one. on. That's two ones back to back. Um, huh. As you try to cast counter magic and say the words, his eyes glow ever so slightly. Sab, you have found yourself unable to talk for the next five real minutes. Oh, okay. You can only narrate what your character does from the, for the until uh, ten. Sorry, eight oh five. Five. Okay. Minutes. <laughs> the dame's gonna kind of watch all this nonsense. Then she's just gonna. Um, are there any uh, scrolls in particular you're after? Yeah, I'm always a darling. I just, you know, scrolls are always useful. Have a nice one. And he closes the door. Okay. I cannot believe you were really. Yeah, you were in there for like five minutes, and, and like 
30 seconds by yourself and wow wow you pissed him way off ash what'd you do <laughs> she just sort of looks at the ground for like 10 seconds and then just follows where lucian went wow what, now i get the silent treatment what I've always dreamed of. Ash, being quiet. Alright, let's go find Lucian. Where has Lucian wandered off to? Using his nose. He just kind of wandered, him and Grizz, maybe looking for something like a snack or something. And they happened to cross Balrin, who is just like eating the inside of whatever is left of, like, something, like, a shell of something. And they're just watching this dragon pick at and eat something out of a shell. Yeah, it's definitely something from uh, the recent fight that maybe has been cooked up? No, hard to tell. Barn can cook it in his stomach. Mm -hmm. You guys have been traveling with that? Well, it's not like we had much choice. Yeah, well, it can talk, so. And if you judge based on what he eats, uh, you should maybe avoid looking at your reflection. I still think he's better than Barry. Oh. Lucian, these, these... I've watched you eat dog treats. I am a dog. <laughs> you are also human. I'm not getting into this. We've all had that argument with him, and we've all lost. Don't worry, Lan, you're not alone. He cho I, I choose what I am based off of what helps my case. <laughs> We're aware. Is that why you said you were blind? Back in the end. Uh, I don't recall. I am a door. Don't talk to me. And I'll hold up my two fingers. That are stone. Classy. You could have gone with wall. You know, because this You know, well, just. Hey, Ballerin! How's it going? He, like, eagerly looks over kind of waves and then keeps eating. Did you, did you... Was there anything that you found out in that brief period? Anything oh, inside? About, about the, uh, the, the fight that uh, Ash managed to pick? No. Ash he picked wants the fight? us to bring him scrolls. Well, I'm not... Surprised about that. Not keep really. An eye out. So, is there anything to fight, clear, do anything? I want to see how this hand works, if you know what I mean. What, what do you. I don't know, I've been out for a little bit. What, are we just wasting some time in here? Well, Waiting we for it to come up. We can't do much around here other than just finding various scraps of whatever resources and handing them off to Dungeon Town. We should probably go talk to the Provisioner and see if there's anything we can do to make ourselves useful. Yes, probably. What's that way? I'll be looking at a map and just point to number f this number four. Uh, there's rumor that, uh, well, you know what it is, and it's an old temple that's sitting there, but there's rumor that someone's living there. And the way out, once we come back out? Um, so this was the library. 
This is the fungal um, forest, which they, the party briefly passed through as on their way to the library. And this is the caves made up of all the shells, or at least the main part of it. And this area over here is firmly under the control of Darrow. Deranged, yeah. corrupted dwarves. Oh, not those guys again. Okay, but once it, once we come back out or submerge, the way to keep going is where? Through the Darrow-controlled territory. Oh, we might as well scope it out if that's the way we're going to have to go, regardless. What do you guys think? Uh, we haven't talked to the Provisioner yet, right? We should talk to the Provisioner before we go run around and do things on our own. No. I want to go to the cell Shell City now. Okay, cool. Who's the Provisioner? Literally. Like, the Which guy that the Provost know? told us to talk to. Lucian, weren't you initially <laughs> in the, like, military, like you were a bunch of mercenaries? Who was a hunter? Okay, my point stands. You still were in a group working <laughs> military operations, right? Uh, if you count that one sergeant, <laughs> where we, f well, well, we didn't meet there. Not really. <sighs> Never really been an organizer. A provisioner group. is just someone who keeps track of. Provisions, aka the stuff that you're gonna need to survive. Like, food. Uh, do I even need to eat anymore? Yeah. Was the do book I do, do I need to eat? Um, as a dungeon born, you can eat, but you don't really need to. Hmm. I mean, we head out. We're not that far off. We go speak with the Provisioner. We keep our eyes out for anything that we can find. And then we go. Maybe if we find a giant slug out there, we can get that guy to, uh... To tell us more about his job. I agree to any plan that doesn't have us talking to more of those kooks. I think and by your kooks, plan I mean wizard. would end up leading to talking to a kook. <laughs> Nothing against wizards, of course. They'll, like, look at Ash. I'm a sorcerer. Thank you very much. So I have no... Ash doesn't like them. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't have formal that training. Was... That wasn't the worst wizard we've met. No, he really wasn't. He seemed pretty reasonable there until Ash managed to tick him off. All right, let's... Lead the way, Leah. Uh... Alright. Lucian suddenly got boomy. He channeled his inner dungeon born and echoed his voice. <laughs> We're going to the provisioner, goddammit. Alright, you show up with the provisioner. It's a simply dressed man, um, only about like four and a half feet tall. Which is odd for, like, what seems to be a standard human. Um, you know, it's been a while. He's a solid four. He's got warts. Kind of sweaty. Missing an ear. Um, he's like, I, I heard you... I Sorry, <clears throat> I, I can't use my wizard voice. I heard you're coming. Thank, thank you, thank you. The provost sent word uh, via courier. Well, we almost didn't. Some of us didn't know what a provisioner meant. I just, I have so many magic items. How can we help you? Well, uh, you know, there's always things that we need, but uh, the only thing I'm allocated to, I, I just received a so, something that bumped up a request from a small reward to a medium. I can give you an item out of our um, warehouse 
if you go investigate a group of people who are foraging for fungus in the forest, uh, they were supposed to return two hours ago, and uh, we fear that they have been beset by creatures who are still prowling about. Huh. All right. Way anyway. That's actually fairly benign and right up our alley. Anything we should know about uh, before we head out? There should be uh, three of them. I believe one was a child. He checks a manifest. Yes. Um, you know, they, they, they can climb up to, the, you know, in, in, into uh, smaller crevices and get some uh, the mushrooms. Um, have, before we head out there, just to be sure. Oh, no, th this is the wrong character. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I well, was going to so, make a joke about romantic intentions with whatever's <laughs> out there, but most of the uh, creatures, the the big ones, should be asleep. You might see a pack of dire snails or two um, out, out by the waist. Maybe some slimes eating up various refuse. Uh, none of those should bother you so long as you don't actively engage with them. Uh, hopefully, they're okay. Most creatures around here are just hungry, so give them a big scare and they'll they'll tend to back off. I think we can work with that. Any other questions, anybody? What species are we looking for? A human, a half elf, and the child is he checks again. Also a elf, but a full one. All right, we know what we're looking for. Let's get another one. So if we find a dwarf, we're leaving him, right? <laughs> wow, Lucian. After we saved your life. Oh, come on. Have some... Have a sense of humor, Dame. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. It's your, guys, it's your guys' first time back together as a full party in a while. But, you know, a lot has changed. And, you know, groups changed and such. Tell me... Each of you, as we montage, like, what's, what's one, what's something that either is different about your group dynamic now, or refreshingly the same? Seb? Um, I think Ash has sort of gotten a little weirder. Um, there's sort of, like, a, a, a sort of dull sort of glaze over his eyes sometimes and uh like he'll be staring at uh the undead or some magnificent structure off in the distance um and uh he's sort of just a little he's sort of just a little like distant and he's he makes sort of like <clears throat> like i don't know how would i describe it um sort of just weird like what if scenarios like hey guys what if we um you know, what if we just took over the great ghoul's throne right and just started just started eating people and while he's doing it he's sort of like riffling the uh the the pages of uh his big spell book his big evil spell book should i say we didn't do that because that's disgusting Right, but just, you know, what if? Okay, like, if you had to raise undead or, like, eat undead or eat dead, which which would you? I'd eat and you it. guys had an issue with thanking the great ghoul and Ash is just talking like this? No, I'm definitely... Too. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't ally myself with the great ghoul. I want to take him out. I want to take the Lich King out. I want to be the Wizard King. Wait, hold oh, on. No. Wait, hold on. No, let's just back that up a yeah. little bit. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I thought. If was... you guys had to put a giant tower somewhere, like, where would it, <laughs> where would it be? At the bottom of the ocean. Why would I ever want a giant tower? I think at the bottom of the ocean is actually a pretty good idea if you set up the right spells. Maybe. Well, if it's a big enough tower, it doesn't matter if it's at the bottom of the ocean. 
No, no, but I mean, if you put it at the bottom of the ocean, it's going to be very difficult for people like you to get to, and I could just raise some giant dead whales. To... Well, you remember that there's the demon shark things that we ran across before. Oh, yeah, those you think I could get those to work for me? Though. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Can you continue the swap process? I will bring you to the fullest extent of the law. This is, hey, this is well within my right to just think. What, are you going to arrest me for a thought crime now? If you put a single stone into the ocean, and I am fairly aware that you wish to raise undead whales to protect this area, I have very little reason not to act. Maybe I'm starting an underwater orphanage. You don't know. And I'll just keep walking. <laughs> That's a cold blow. Saying that to an orphan. It's the... It's it's literally a quirk. Where I say... I, I, I like the suffering of others. So... Blame. Okay, I was, you know, I was equally going to accept the quirk is you act like you're 15. <laughs> <laughs> From him, what's something refreshingly the same or different about your group? Sorry, who? You cut out. Rumham. Oh, okay. Uh, I... Uh, I think... You know, Callie has always been wary of Ash. Uh, definitely more wary now. Um, uh, I I also think just like, just gen generally a, a little sick and tired of everything. Uh, we've, we've spent a little too long in this uh, stone thief for her liking. And just just ready to breathe some like real air, probably maybe a little snippy. Helen, um, I think the dame has gotten fed up enough with the stone thief that she has started to simplify her self care routine. It's the simplest hair that anybody has seen her in, I think. So it's still taking what 20, 30 minutes. I mean, she still has to make sure it looks great, but that doesn't mean, you know, maybe it's okay to just do, like, a simple crown braid instead of getting, like, the really elaborate stuff. Mm -hmm. She's not wow. pulling out her, you know, hair jewelry anymore. Like, just a little bit, like, because, I mean, you still gotta be, like, cute, but, like, she's not, like, putting on a show. Man? Uh... <laughs> Leanne's voice normally in combat is very loud she specifically words herself in order to have the words boom and bounce off of like crevices and such to ensure her commands are heard mm -hmm. as the stone thief has been going on and especially after the events that happened at the gate uh, Leanne's voice has been faltering more, dropping to a much more quieter tone, even in the midst of the battle. Alarming for sure. Lucian, who's now bald. Yeah, that's that's one of the changes, and I think one of the similarities is uh, he just kind of hangs back uh, by Dame, and if Calia says something irritable towards... Yeah, everyone knows she's a little bit more on edge. He'll, he'll crack a joke, you know, he'll say probably trouble in paradise every single time that her and Leanne say anything that's not like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like whispered and it's just like... It's it's not even really funny at this point. Like every time he'll just say trouble in paradise and Dame will probably just like roll her eyes. But Lucian's like having fun. Glad someone's enjoying themselves. Uh, hopefully they don't hear it, but they might over overhear one or two comments. <laughs> I would I would think that that's not much of a change, though, from what <laughs> it was. 
All right, you wander into the fungal forest. Um, the unlike the stony parts of the rest of the cavern, this place is covered in like a, a lichen, a moss. Uh, the every, every time you step, it just squishes softly. Um, there are small mushrooms. There are big mushrooms. There's mushrooms as big and thick as a tree. Um, in uh, these, a lot of these are toxic and poisonous, and some are even sentient. Um, some, some are creatures that look like mushrooms. Uh, but through trial and error, uh, the Demzians of Dungeon Town have managed to figure out which ones uh, that they can harvest safely and eat safely. Um, which largely comes down to just like two or three different species. amazing and varied diet they eat. Uh, guys, go ahead. You guys remember that fungus cave that we went through to get to land before time? Yeah. yeah I don't like funguses anymore. Fungi. <laughs> Fungi. That fungus was far less annoying. Oh, uh, there is a uh, scream of a, what sounds like a female's voice from around the corner, and then a big and heavy thump of something crashing down onto the ground. Uh, you guys rush around the corner to see one of the fungus trees, which all of its branches are just like teeming with bright red, softly glowing fungus uh, bulbs. There's three people in the, in the tree that are picking themselves up, and it appears to be a, a small horde of monkey-like creatures hooting and hollering at the base. The trunk is pretty thick around, like up to like five feet, so they're going to have to climb up in a minute here. There's also up in the trees, uh, uh, some of the trees and some of the big mushrooms, um, flying monkeys sitting there. Also hootering and hollering, looking for their chance to swoop in for a bite. Is the floor gray for anyone else? Gray. No. Okay. The boxes. I, so that's here's how I something last night. weird. I can see the walls of the trees, but not the map itself. What the fuck? Yeah, that that's how I played last time without knowing that there wasn't a map. I I'm gonna refresh real quick. Interesting. I will also yep. go ahead and roll initiative for everyone. Wait a second. What's up? <laughs> oh, by the way, Toon, I th last combat, I think some of us had the human, like, better initiative feat triggered for some reason. Weird. Okay, the initiative didn't roll, so let's give it a real quick refresh. But I like it here. This is a good, good example of this, uh, this amazing engine we use. We, uh, this is probably the last week we're going to be on the forge. Actually, um, we're going to be swapping to me self-hosting after this. I might not have it set up in t in time for next uh, session. Though. Oh no. Oh no. We it, actually it looks like running on the beta. We have broken initiative. Oh no. It's never really broken. No, it, uh, it just means you can't use a fancy module. Oh, wait. Just self roll initiative bit. Just click the button on everyone in the turn order. That's right, baby. Well you see it looks like the monsters uh can't roll their initiative. So I will, Down man dirty. you know, I will manually roll their initiative like a heathen. I got dice over here. You want me to bust those out for you? Let's make it count. I got my D20. So where do you roll it? Oh, it's right underneath the, okay, found it. Am I finding that one? Oh boy. Just the dice Alright, these guys have... Wow, those guys have plus 17. 
Sí. Okay, those guys are 10. While well, the initiative is being handled, uh, the virtual tabletop we are playing on is Forge. Nope, it's Foundry. Not VT, Forge, my bad. Currently yes, hosted Foundry. on the Forge. Yeah, that's right. They, just, they, they made their things sound the exact same, like very similar. That's great. Anyway, Foundry. Oh, baby. Oh, that's <clears throat> that's it is a one time purchase great. software for GMs to purchase where players connect for free. There are multiple modules that you can install in order to customize your game to the way you desire. Like 1001 fish, 1002 fish, 1003 fish. Wait. Thanks, Vanna White. Who's Vanna White? Uh, she used is to that host. genuine or? She used to. Really? You've yeah. never seen Wheel of Fortune? Oh. No. Boomer alert! <laughs> it's bad. But, but no, the that's... opposite, because Wheel of Fortune's been on TV for a really long time. All right. Uh... It's Pat Jack and Vanna White. <laughs> Some of the smaller monkeys move out of the way as with a big thump, a shadow passes by first. Oh, you guys hell. see a large, what the hell? hunched, oh, giant a... ape. No, that's a big... Climbing a... What? That's a big monkey. Where did you even get that? I took a regular monkey, right? And then I scaled <laughs> it up. Oh! You gotta, you gotta show me where you got the that token. I yeah, want to support that guy. Yeah, this is from ForgottenAdventures.net. ForgottenAdventures.net. Well, certainly it doesn't seem fair for this thing to come in and smash all the key people you came to save. Um, so as it stomps along, uh, one of you feel if you want if you want these people to not be just immediately smashed, go ahead and cry out, get the thing's attention. Is that just a free action? Yeah, I'll allow it. The GM uh, is giving us a chance to save three people. Like, wait, is that in the action economy? Uh, Callie is just gonna uh, yell. Uh, you better hold on to something because I'm about to smash it. Uh, yeah, the Dane's just gonna. Uh, yeah, she's just gonna scream. She's gonna, just gonna break out the, the the good old horror movie scream. That yeah. always gets people's attention. <laughs> Uh, right, you are far away, but there, like, from behind the tree, something wrenches, and a large rock no. with a fungus still attached to it is thrown Callie's way. What? Why? Oh, yeah. There he what? is. A large rock. What? Why? Why? Oh. <laughs> it's broken. Why? This worked perfectly when I tested it, damn it. I refuse to believe you tested it. Uh huh. Let's see. Um... Wait, flying monkey. Bully monkey, flying monkey. This one? What? Uh, please oh, yeah. Let's just go to the latest beta. Oh. Oh. I'm a. I probably shouldn't develop across the prototype versions of Foundry when I'm testing this stuff, and then play on the last version that's actually publicly available. That would explain a lot. So how much is busted? Uh, I can't roll enemies. Uh, I can't roll my abilities. I got my d20s. All right, everyone, crack in. Um, this is we're going old school. We're rolling like it's. Does any of my things work? What the hell? Literally the third d20 I've rolled tonight, and it's a fucking one. <laughs> 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and start a rolling. Um, all right, Kalia, that is a 25 versus PD. Uh, Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a 23 that versus PD. That definitely hits. I, uh, I do be stupid. A huge, huge boulder again with a... Um, uh, mushroom attached to it slams into you for 35 damage. <laughs> it's uh, a good thing she said that. <laughs> uh, that's not applying automatically, correct? Um, so I I guess it did in person because I had you select it, but if I typed out 35, you can right click the 35 and apply as damage still. Are you sure? Oh, in character. Okay. Cool. The the rock smashes wait, wait. on Callie's it... shield around her. Why was it PD? Because it's the a rock. rock physical defense. Oh, oh, okay, okay, got it. Got okay, it. yeah, but then an arrow counts as AC. Yeah, you They're... can you can reasonably deflect an arrow with having armor, but no amount of armor is going to prevent a rock from smushing you. Okay, so then why is wasn't the attacks of the dragon PD? I don't know. Look, I don't know. Have... Look, I understand you didn't make it, but <laughs> no, that, that reasoning is bullshit. <laughs> well Deflected. Deflected. Just like your question. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Seeing Where? some additional um, possible food, the flying monkeys are going to rustle around and then hold their action. Lucian, it is now your turn. So targeting isn't a thing? Targeting won't do sh anything right now. But That's please, a lot of monkeys. Please target so I know who you want to attack. All right. I see this flying monkey. And so uh, let's see, you will normally want to fire your double range attack, right? Yeah. All right. So if you click on it and expand, you'll see the formula for it. And in fact, if you edit it, you can copy that whole thing and just paste it right into chat. That's what I want it to happen. See how I did that? All right, so you target at the monkey. Since they're in um, a tree, they're, they're going to get a bonus to their AC. Um, but you managed to nick one. These are mooks. Um, you definitely did not roll the right damage. Um, what do you do instead? You just rolled level. It's uh, damage. Copy the whole thing. That and that was a natural even, which means you get to fire again. There you go. Your arrow flies into one of the um, fly uh, flying monkeys. It is still up, but it is badly wounded. Um, uh, triggering their held action. Uh, we'll, we'll, your, we'll let your second arrow fly first. It is a miss as it flies into the uh tree leaves and the rest of the monkeys are going to and th this tree are going to fly at you and mob you and the one that's badly injured is going to shuffle away and fly off into the distance um however the other two i can't even roll their abilities um are going to so they, they start their turn unengaged oh. Uh, and are they able to pounce on you since you had a lower initiative than them and make both a savage bite and a ripping claws attack? Oh, 
Oh, that doesn't even nice. I get to uh, type it twice. This is terrible. Oh, does it not even want to roll again? Where is it? It's going. There we go. Uh, the first one is a hit against the illusion for 25 damage. The second one is a miss as you like sidestep out of the way, but they also get their ripping claws attack. Uh, what's your AC again? Uh, 22, that's a miss. And that second one is a miss. And then it was uh, Grizz's turn. Yeah, 15 AC, 22 damage. Nope, that is a miss. Uh, their fur is just too tough for Grizz to bite through. That's it. That's it. All right, I literally like can't run combat like this. This is fundamentally like just this is gonna take forever. Uh What do I do about it, though? Call session early? That seems a little dumb. And thus the giant monkey fell asleep. <laughs> that would be pretty good, though. I mean, can we just describe our actions? Roll a d20 and you tell us if it hits or not, and then you decide what that's, happens? That's if what we're doing. The battle. I mean, like, we don't have to actually roll anything. We can just say, hey, I want to hit it. <laughs> you tell us yes see. or no. I'm just, I'm just, let me just try something real quick. Okay, that much still works. Uh, we, let's just change the rule system to Nave. Yeah, let's just... In look. Nave, in Nave, all you have to do is roll over 15 to succeed on an action. Yeah. Okay, So wait. that's skill check, and then, uh, you still hit regular monster... AC, there's no PD or MD. And that's it. That's basically it. Yeah, but that's... It's just, like, things like the double attack and such don't work. So, I did pull this up, like, on my, like my development instance, and it works fine there. So I just have to real quick... No, because then I still have to update and reboot the server. I would yeah. literally rather Might be a live debugging session. No. Have we have we mentioned to the audience that you're just like an actual foundry dev? Yeah, now? Uh, I uh, I work both for then foundry that's... on the core software and on this system. So this is literally my fault. Um, this is this is why this happens. It's not a problem with foundry or the 13th age module it's because the madman that works on it himself is is running the game yeah how else are you supposed fun. to test huh you've pulled back the curtain i pulled back the curtain um you know what that's a great idea i don't have to fix it i just have to pull it back to the last version yeah so if you use the stable versions you never have issues that's eh, it's not always Okay, you have far less issues. I'm trying to sell your product, and you're out here making it sound worse. Cody also it's... uses something like, I don't know, like a record-breaking number of modules, so... It is insane. Some people uh, actually use more than me, and I think that's kind of impressive uh, at a fundamental level. All right, please hold. Everyone's going to have to reconnect <laughs> to the server as I uh, real lickety-split. Uh, reinstall the last version of the system, bringing us back before the effects and multi attacks. That's okay. And we'll reboot, and then it should start working again. Dyson no Bakadan bites the dust. My foundry. Uh huh. You know, I was actually going to argue if I could just turn on my Discord camera and roll with real dice. <laughs> you know, I actually, like... I don't want your dice. You've rolled, like, five ones, Seb. <laughs> <laughs> I have three colors. I have I have the hot rod red. 
I have uh like this really nice blue, black and red scheme and then the Slytherin scheme because that was the the only one they had left when I went to the store for those. Can someone draw like a technical difficulty screen for me? No, that's fine. Uh, da, 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 you know, da, I'll, da, da, da. I got a very nice set of metal dice um, for Christmas from Ellen. Uh, or was that my birthday? I was... Are they nice? Do they mess up your table? Uh, I roll them only on like a, you know, dice pad or on like, you know, something like I don't roll them straight on a table. They would definitely Come mar on. up like wood. Yeah, they're yeah. not like super sharp, but they are heavy. I definitely feel like I could cut myself on them. Like if I stepped on one, I would be bleeding. I don't know about that, but there would be some Lego effects going on. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Some inventive cursing. I've already packed them away. I can't send you a photo. Just take a picture of the box. Yep. <laughs> labeled desk crap. <laughs> hey, I think I at least labeled it like Cody's office. Probably, because we have to tell people where to put it. Yeah, I also have some... I, I've accidentally ended up with a lot of blue dice. I also... Like, those metal dice are blue, and I also have a set of D6 that are, like, metallic blue um, from when I played Kill Team. We didn't talk about dice for a while. That's also not bad. You know what? We should just play Kill Team some time, guys. Yeah. Welcome to the 13th Hour, the 13th Age podcast. All right, so everyone, podcast. Well, that's a really Bye. good podcast name. All right, so everyone wants up Final Fantasy XIV. We'll finish the combat by doing a dungeon. There we go. <laughs> that's a normal person thing to do. And uh, tonight, it seems that the crew of the 13th Hour has uh, started Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, but that's... That's a 14, not a 13. Right. But for all intents and purposes, Final Fantasy 13 is just a weedy sort of topic that I want to avoid. Uh, I have a very sort the of collector's edition of Final Fantasy 13. Yeah, that makes, um, that makes sense. Book, I did not beat the game. I was actually a waste of money. <clears throat> so the game actually goes from a linear sort of funnel through very long cutscenes to eventually an open world grind unmatched really to this day except by maybe the uh the most insane of like Skyrim players um hell look server reconnection message brought to you there we go now offline so what class is everyone playing in final fantasy 14 i'm uh, i'm still i'm kind of picking between dragoon and monk it's kind of like monk is kind of cool because i get some aoe's but dragoon's cool because i get to jump <laughs> yep <laughs> jumping is jumping is about it i don't understand i have a jump back i have a jump in then out i don't have just a jump in Oh, I think we're coming back. Do you actually play the Hokey Pokey yet, though? And that disappoints me. All right, if everyone reloads, it looks like we have successfully gone back to the uh, last version. Mm-hmm. I've been doing Warrior and Red Mage. It's a good time. Mm. Red Mage is fun. Paladin because I like my life uncomplicated. <laughs> I just like to kill evil, move along. You know, like my job is to stand in one spot and get hit. I do that no matter what I'm trying to do, so I might as well just <laughs> actual profession. Yeah, you, you know, I stand in one spot and get hit all the time as a white mage too. I don't understand. 
See, I, you're... the problem is you're not supposed to. Be yeah, supposed you're not supposed to get hit. And and that yeah, that sort of that sort of brings the conversation back around to Ellen, which is like, are you not getting hit enough? That's that's. Now here's the thing. Ellen has been getting hit enough, but Rumham refuses to just walk five feet outside of an AOE bubble. Oh yeah. Hey, you know, I got a lot of think. I got a lot to think about as a white mage. Okay. Yeah, thinking about what to make for dinner. Yeah. All right. Is everyone back in? Yeah. It's uh, resembling. Yeah. yeah. It is now the human, well, humanoid's turn. Um, they are throwing bits of rock, bits of tree branches, um, waving around a torch, and just like jostling the, as deep into the br protective-ish branches of this tree as they can. And it's now Callia's turn. Oh, boy. Um, so is this a uh, thing in the middle? How do I ping again with this pink grass? Uh, is this like a, a lake or a river? Yeah, that thing. Um, it is a uh, small field of differently colored like moss that seems a bit damper than the rest. Um, and then just some, like, fungus that's grown almost like grass. Mm hmm And can I tell, like, based on, like, maybe knowledge that I have of, like, experiencing dealing with fungus in the past, like, if any of this is poisonous? Oh, you sure mm -hmm. can make a wisdom roll for that. Okay. Uh... Oh, God, it closed everything. Uh... Woo! Wow! What? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, get the confetti out. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it is quite poisonous. However, you remember that it's only going to be poisonous if you let it touch bare skin. Okay, so like if I walk over it with my boots and stuff, it should be okay? Yep. Okay. The dame uh, might how... be in a worse condition than you, given she doesn't tend to cover her legs. Right. Uh, how close can I get? I uh, can run all the way, like yeah, over here, here, um, in a single uh, move turn. Yeah. So I am going to uh, pop my halo, and so oh, the effects thing is gone. Never mind. Uh, but I have an item, right? I need to equip. Uh, to... You have an item called bonuses. You can put two AC in there. Okay. So I just did it. For uh, okay. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> damn it, um, I am I have to pop a heal because I'm at freaking like twenty five percent health already. Um, Your skin else looks need to heal nice and soft is... and supple as you the the glow goes over you. Uh, okay, I, I'll pick my self, and, uh, I guess, I don't know, Ash, he looks like he has less health than Lucian, if you want to make a heal. Um, oh, nice, thank you. Is that free? No, you have to use it from your recoveries. Uh, then, uh, somebody else, then. I mean, whoever because wants I... to, they can. Can I take the other heal if nobody wants it? Uh, sure. You can always use your rally saying uh, nah because uh, my clear heal is a quick action so I'd yep you'd have that. to downgrade your standard to a quick anyway if you want to do two heals in one turn Damn it. okay uh fine i'll i'll wait i got i'm back to 70 uh so then i'm gonna run up over here uh and <sighs> kelly's gonna start banging her shield uh trying to get the attention away from the people Ooh. I don't want to click one of Ash's dice. Uh, trying to get the attention away from the other people in the tree uh, on her. Like, hey, come on, I got tasty bananas over here. Uh, and hold an action to attack if someone tries to hit her. All right, these flying monkeys up here look at you with like snarling fangs and their eyes are just gleaming. But they do not execute their held action against you. Dan, uh, it's okay. now your turn. Okay. 
Talia stomped a trail through the poisonous things, probably saying that they're poisonous. Yeah, yes, I'm, I would let everybody else know. <laughs> no, to be careful. I'm gonna stay back here and help Lucian uh, with his flying monkeys, and I'm going to battle cry at the persistent one. And roll like poop. That is unfortunately a miss. And I, I still have my spell catching gloves. Yep. You want to use those on it at will? Yeah, no, <sighs> hang on on that. Don't worry about it. But I mean, they're mooks. We could potentially wipe a ton of them, right? Yeah, that's that's not like my super high damage thing. That's just my regular oh. damage. All right, never mind then. Yeah, ho hold on. Don't worry. I've got stuff up my sleeve that would have like benefit from stuff like that, but not yet. All right, I'll call that good thing. All right, Ash, it's yeah, your turn. Uh, so poisonous stuff. Can we just go around? Uh, it's like all the way across. There's a patch that's less. Oh, than less that. Over there. How close can we get? You can like, like Kali, you can get across if you want. Oh, okay. Um, a particularly a particular save for this would be. Um. Ash. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. My constitution's really high. I think if I just bundle up tighter, I, I'll be fine. He carved the path. Yeah, you can oh, follow did... her path, and it's going to be an easier check. Okay. As you're midway through this path, first of all, give me your save. Your check, uh, uh, constitution check. Okay. You're just okay. looking for a your level. I think 25 is an easy. Oh, you've got to no, be that, kidding me. It can't be... Yes, I think it, it must be 20 is easy at this level, uh, which means you succeed. However, the, mo the flying monkeys have been waiting for a squishier target to uh, mm. pass by, and they are Boy, going to take of... this chance to fly down and latch onto you, crawling all over your, um, you know. Oh, robe. that's a that's also kind of a mistake. Uh, I mean, you're getting three savage bite attacks. Oh, and they're rolling with a with advantage. No. Oh, three. Okay. Oh, no, well, none, the, of, none uh, of that. Where's Where's the third one? I guess I didn't click the third time. Yeah, none of that. Okay, that one hits. As you're distracted by the first two, um. The, the last one manages to sneak in a bite. Um, worse, uh, all of these are... Oh, you know what? That doesn't apply right now because they already all get three ripping claws as well for having pounced on you. Wait, no. It's the, the higher than my, than higher than my strength. Oh, my strength is... First of all, 10. your strength is low, but... Um... I love okay. It. Bad man. Uh, but when they pounce, they get to make both both a bite and a ripping claw attack. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. They're taking um, chunks of your flesh with you as they rip and bite, and they're crawling oh. all across you. You manage to stumble uh, across to the other side, all of them still attached. I uh. You, you... alright, well, I'll catch everyone later. You have a good one. You, your lightning fork just flies off. It, like, you can't, they, right as you're about to cast it on them, I... it, it, they yank your hood down over your eyes and you just go wild and fl it flies off I into have... a fungus. I have a free reroll. Uh, geez. Can I tank one of those for Ash? No. Nope. No, I have a I have a free reroll. Uh, okay. You fire with your other hand and manage to get one doing thirty seven damage. Um It doesn't it doesn't change. Doesn't though. even chain. And a lot of them zapped off of you. You still have two attach. Oh good, I'm glad. Yeah. Good. 
Don't worry, these are just my friends. All right, it is now the bully monkey's turn. Um, they always operate in, in outnumbering their foes. Uh, so let's see, there's three humans over there, which means all of them are going to move in and start like wrenching and grabbing and bonking at them, um, trying to pull these people out. They might last another round before the, they are in serious danger. You see like a hat come flying off and like a, a ripped um, sleeve. It is now Leanne's turn. It's my turn. Yep. So, uh, why is the game paused? No. Uh, it shouldn't be. Has it not it is for me. Now? No, Watch apparently. Uh, let me refresh, because apparently I was put into eternal time stop. Behold, the world, though. Cool. Everyone else has star platinum, and I don't. Messed up. Yeah, so I want to. I want while I'm loading in. Can you just move Leanne like on the other side of the river next, to, like Ash? Mm -hmm. How are you crossing the poisonous path? It's been stomped through twice now. You know, it's just a free check at this point. Well, you got Leon already and already wears like good armor to begin yeah, with. Yeah, that's true. What about your tail? I can just put my... my tail goes up. I... If it doesn't touch the shroom spores, it's fine. <laughs> now. Kind of like when firing uh, engage at some an enemy engaged with your ally when you're ranged. These things are literally claw crawling all over Ash. So if you attack them, um, if you roll a one, you'll re-roll the attack against Ash. Oh, good. That, that's a small, small price. Let me just... Uh... Better work. Oh, solid. And four command points. It didn't hit. You managed to nick off like a tiny bit of tail, and that's. <laughs> but How you... do these monkeys have a higher AC than me? They're monkeys. They're small. They're evasive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Alright, is that your turn? Uh, eh. I'll give that to, to Ash and um, Kalia. All right, each of you get temporary hit points equal to the average amount that you would gain using recovery, which again is on your sheet in parentheses. 33, so let's go, baby. Thank you. Just stand tall. We can't afford to fall here. All right, with the big shuddering movement, the, the giant hunched ape, its head almost scraping the tall of this part of the cavern, comes in and roars, oh spilling, God. just spit covers Kalia's face. It swings a large object at her. I'm... <laughs> Um, luck... Oh, thank God that does not hit. Oh my God! Her sh she like there's she physically moves back like a few inches, leaving tracks in the lichen on the ground as this huge <laughs> object just smashes into her shield. Oh my God! And it, oh my, and it gets to make another attack. Only on an even hit or miss. That was oh, I, it wasn't even. It didn't highlight. 
Um, it what did you say anything? It cut. Because it's funny. The, the name of the move is really funny. Oh, thank God. It's only 15 damage. As you're like offset by that initial attack, you're slung behind. Oh, no, it wasn't a slag tight. It was a slag might. Right, right, right. Those are the ones that stand up from the ground. And it. And the giant hunched ape, like, slams its big fist into its chest. And it is now. Uh, the flying monkey's turn. Um, there's two engaged with Lucian. They get a plus five bonus to their disengage checks and deal 10 damage when they do so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll 40 20 for all that are engaged. Uh, and then Ooh. check. Um, they get plus five bonuses, so all of them succeed because it's a lot. Wait, it's 11 plus for disengage? I should know this. I should know this. Yes. Uh, uh, go ahead. One of them rolled a six. Yep. And they got plus five, five makes it 11. Yep. But they're engaged with Grizz and Lucian, therefore giving them a minus one. You're right. That one fails. So one <laughs> flies back off into the trees, uh, dealing 10 damage to Lucian. The other is unable to escape. Um, and then two on Ash managed to leap back up to their tree, and he takes 20 damage as they scratch him on the way out. What? Oh my gosh. What monsters. What horrible little goblins. It is now Lucian's turn. Actually, it not disengaging is almost worse. <laughs> no, uh, you're right. Ten is probably as little damage as you're going to do to me. No, but for me, it's like I want to be able to shoot, but now I'm going to get two attacks of opportunity. So I, I will don't. transform. Lucian suddenly, like, he, he grows larger, but his, where he normally has the luscious manes in his werewolf form, he is still just like a bald cat. Uses. Applies temp HP. Okay. Um, and then. Even Wait, in his werewolf not... form, he still has two fingers that are just it's like a statue, but bigger. Wow. That was a bad roll. That was a bad roll. Um, it's just hard to hit something that's clutching to you. <laughs> okay. Nothing's hidden. Poor Grace. Can Grace even hit these things at this point? Yes, he can. And it's a plus one when he's mm. when they're engaged. Yeah, he just rolled a two. <laughs> All right, the humans are still like hiding in their hole. Um, they've got at at the start of their next turn, things are not. They're going to start like having members being plucked out, or rather, at the monkey's turn. Uh, Calia. <laughs> So I am currently engaged, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a fist the size of you just right in front of you. If I were to th consider trying to disengage, what mm -hmm. would that entail? Standard disengage check. Cool. So I have a five with the priestess. Yep. Uh, that I would like to use to help with this disengage check because Calia uh -huh. wants to go save those people in that tree. That's a noble thing to do, but you have to say something nice about the priestess. That's your complication. Oh my god. Uh... I know, it's the worst one yet, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know, she's got nice hair or something. Mm. <laughs> Not feeling it. 
Uh, she inspires people to do noble deeds, uh, even when uh, those people may not necessarily believe in her. Uh, and that is noble in and of itself in order to help a cause. I'm proud of you. Um, you walk confidently out, feeling uh, firmly under the protection. Although a big swing comes your way, you just keep walking and it misses. Oh, actually, I wanted to put my shield down first. Shit, can I still do that? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, 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 I'm, I am gonna deploy tower shield. She did it, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna deploy my shield in front of Leanne. Uh, and, <laughs> um, and then, uh, run with my smaller shield, uh, over here, um, to try and intercept those monkeys from snatching those people. Okay. I'll tell to you, no, turn. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, and, and Callie is going to do the same thing, just, like, try and uh, take their attention away, um, bang on her shield, uh, stuff like that. I, I Can I make an attack still? Or I guess You're deploying deployed. my shield is a standard action. Uh, is my... Yeah, no, I, I, I can't do anything. I don't think. Yep, yeah, I I'll just end my turn there. All right, you get the monkey's attention, though, and they start turning your way. They outnumber you. They're not afraid to bully you. Dave? Um, I'm going to keep on back here with uh, Lucian and the uh, persistent flying monkey. And let me get my character sheet open. Oh, it went over into that corner. And we're going to battle chant it again. That went better. Yeah, um, with a big clap, um, you see a bunch of leaves, a bunch of fungus bits, like, rain down with a bit of blood. And I'm gonna stay here. Alright, Ash. Okay, as a quick action, I'm going to activate the Deathmark Wand. Okay. And I'm going to put it on Big Dude. Okay. And then, uh, am I engaged engaged? With no, the guy? you are no longer engaged. Okay, so if I moved right here, for example, would that be all right? Yep. Okay. I have very little left in me. I have run out of magic, I say out loud, because it is true. Uh, this particular run of the Stone Thief has not been kind. Oh my god. Sam! <laughs> alright, alright. That's not real. You. That's. That's not. There's no. Okay. Oh. Good. Oh, it, that roll is a level one. Yeah, you, uh, you need to update it to actually have the level that's at in your sheet. Yeah, 1d6 plus 1d6. So you should oh, have Spartan level five, right? Yeah, just update the level and yeah. roll it again. Uh, seven, and... Oh, sorry, it'll take uh, seven ongoing damage, and it will take... One, two, three, four... Oh. Okay. Fifteen actual damage from the attack. All right. Uh, the bully monkey goes down. Um, f just burnt. The others Ew. squeal out. Surprised. Is one of those a misunderstood bully? Mo okay. 
I was now the bully mon mon monkey's turn, and they still outnumber you guys. Um, they are also, as the name would imply, bullies. So uh, they're going to uh, go and swarm Kalia. There are seven of them. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Whew. Just a, a, a for, it's almost like someone's playing music thump 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 as they all are just hitting Kalia for all around um the first one misses the second one hits for nine damage the third one is deflected the fourth deflected the fifth 14 damage because he's the third plus the sixth 14 damage so 14 plus 28 uh plus nine 35 damage total Kalia Cool. Uh, let me get my calculator out. And then, Seven. Land, give us the last turn, and then we're going to wrap up session and then resume this fight next time. Okay, so from behind the shield, am I in range to stab at the giant monkey? You are. Cool. Watch me stab. <laughs> Ooh. How come she doesn't have to fish for an 18? She just gets one. You stab above the shield and into the hand of the beast and it wheels back, bleeding, angry. Scratched. And that is where we will end the session. Bow. Sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. That one's squarely on me. Let's give a real quick, no bonus question, just sub something you liked uh sure yeah uh i i like the map Good. i thought it was neat i liked the uh, both maps actually good from him uh i like the big green monkey monkey ellen um i like i did actually like the wizard i thought he had a lot of personality and he was i think the most palatable of the wizards we've had recently <laughs> that's not saying much pow <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed Lucian getting like five icon relationships he didn't use. That's true. We'll have those <laughs> for the next session too, though. Okay. Um. Anything else, Pat? Um. Giant monkey. It's cool. Monkey. 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 Ape together. Strong. <laughs> Max? I'm gonna make them extinct. I also like the enemies. All right, uh, we will see you all next week then, where I definitely feel comfortable running, given that we have the rest of this fight to do. Um, I will be moving, and so I think we'll just leave it on the forge for next week, so I don't have to get worried about getting the server set up. So as long as I have a computer to play at, we'll be playing. Uh, Dedication. Uh, and I probably won't even fix those bugs before then. So, you know, we'll probably just say in this version. Uh, until then.